Welcome to At Your Library. I'm your host, Kathleen Clifford. It's that time of year again. The leaves are falling off the trees, the nights are getting longer, and the holidays are upon us. With all the cooking, the baking, and the holiday celebrations, most of us find it most difficult to find that perfect gift for our friends and family. To make life a little less stressful this year, I have invited from Bank Square Books in Mystic and Savoy Bookshop and Cafe in Westerly, Annie Philbrook and Kelsey April to share with us the hottest books to gift this season. So first we're going to start off with Kelsey. Welcome to my show, Kelsey. Thanks for having me yet again. This is our Love third it. year yes. and um, I personally already. can tell you that every year I buy books that you recommend. Yes. Um, I give, I personally give everybody books um, for Christmas. It's what I do. It's my thing. We all know that. Um, but I never know what exactly to buy. So cool. Kelsey's going to talk about books for children and young adults and give us some suggestions. Thank you. Cool. Yeah, I just, I love doing this show, so thanks again oh, um, for having me. So <clears throat> we're gonna start young and kind of work our way up. Um, first on the list is llamas with lemonade. Llamas are very hot this year. They are, and you know what, funny story, that's actually why the publishing company chose the llama for the cover, because it's actually an alphabet book. Oh, and great. as you go through, it's just a different animal with a different um, like item, and it's an alliteration, and it's so cute, and I always like try to decide which one is my favorite. Right. But they chose llama for the cover, because they were like, llamas are really popular with the llama on the cover. So this is really, really awesome. Um, it's just an alphabet book for kids, really sturdy board book. It's from a small publisher called Anik Press. Nice. Huge fan of their work. Um, so Llamas with Lemonade is definitely a really good gift for the season. Next is another one of my favorite board books. <laughs> this one <laughs> is Pure Joy. It makes me so happy. Um, it's called Where is Fuzzy Penguin? And it's a board book about a penguin, um, <laughs> or actually a group of penguins. And it's a, like a rhymy story. Okay. Um, and you have to find the fuzzy penguin. Oh. So they're all like colored black right. but one of them is fuzzy velvet so you have to like go through and find the fuzzy penguin and it's not as simple as you would think so kids have to kind of go around and like find the fuzzy penguin and then you find them on each page this is so and great it just, it just makes me laugh so you like, use the story. all your senses to find you use all them. your senses it's like it's a contrast book which is also good for kids it's a tactile book which is good for kids it's rhyming which is good for kids so this book is really really amazing it's a low price point who too it's 8 doesn't 99. love penguins who doesn't love penguins and who doesn't love finding love it. fuzzy oh that's penguins. really neat i think you yes. might leave that one with me yes <laughs> Okay, um, and then on a more serious note, we have a book called The Ranger. Um, this is also from a relatively small press. Um, this is about a uh, young girl named Annie. She's a ranger in the woods, and she's, she stumbles upon a fox who's been wounded, and she says that I will, I will feed you and tend to your wounds, but that's it. Once we're done, we're parting ways, and the fox kind of doesn't leave her alone, and it's a story of uh, friendship and um, kind of unexpected bonding. There's a twist in this story nice. that's really, really nice. It's very simple, very sparse. Um, story, but gorgeous, gorgeous illustration. Um, so this Beautiful. is actually a really nice wintertime story because you can tell that it's winter, the, you know, the trees mm -hmm. don't have any leaves on them or anything. So The Ranger by Nancy Bow, very, very good. Uh, the next on my list, also pure joy, is <laughs> Spencer's New Pet by Jesse Seema, who's one of my favorite author illustrators. Uh, this one just came out this fall. It is a wordless picture book, meaning that there are no words. It is just pictures telling the story, which I think is a really interesting way for kids to grasp storytelling, is kind of visually. Um, this is a story about a young boy named Spencer who um, really, really wants a pet. He can't get one. Um, so he decides to make one. And so he makes a um, balloon animal dog and takes the dog around town. And like there's all these like things that could potentially go wrong. They encounter pointy things and sharp things and a I porcupine. I love how his dog is red, the, mm -hmm. but everything else is in black so and white. So more contrast. And then this is another book nice. with a twist. So you get to the end and something happens and you're like, wow, didn't see that coming. Wow. Um, so this is really, really fun. And she kind of modeled this after like, um, old black and white film which is why it has that look and then she added the pop of red in there Love to sort it. of make it contrasting That's so great. spencer's new pet by jesse Sima, very very good the silliest <laughs> book that i brought which i um will occasionally do dramatic readings for so if you come down to the bookstore and ask me to read this book to you i would love to do that <laughs> it's called who wet my pants by bob shea and it's about a um, sort of park ranger bear who discovers that his pants are wet and he doesn't know why. So he goes around blaming all of his friends that his pants are wet, and he has to solve this mystery of how his pants got wet. This is a, a really, really good read aloud. It's super duper silly. The illustrations are amazing. 
Um, and this is just like a sort of great book, great gift book for any kid that likes to giggle and laugh. Well, and you know, there's been times where a lot of people have wet their pants, so kids right, can maybe identify right, exactly, there. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, fun. A little bit of relating. I'll have to look at that to see the ending. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, this is another favorite of mine. This is a little bit for older kids, mm -hmm. maybe like eight and up. It's called Big Ideas for Curious Minds. It's put out by the School of Life, uh, which they're known for doing philosophy books. So this is a um, book of philosophy introduction for young people. Wow. Yeah, okay. it takes really popular or well-known philosophy concepts um, and makes them accessible for a younger crowd. But I, as an adult, have read this book, and mm -hmm. it's actually really, really great. If you don't know anything about philosophy and you kind of want to just get your feet wet and get a sense of what the big concepts in philosophy are, this book is amazing. What, if, um, what kind of things do they talk about? Um, so one of the things, the um, big idea, number three, I can't remember what page it's on, but it's, it's, it talks about how um, when you want something really, really bad, mm -hmm. this thing is going to make me happy, but then you get that thing and it doesn't make you happy. Why does that happen? Okay. So it addresses questions. Wow. Yeah, it addresses questions that kids kind of naturally have when they're young, but mm -hmm. as they become adults, um, they sort of like lose that um, curiosity. So this helps them sort of harness that curiosity and, f and figure out these questions. And these it sounds like questions. something that would be really good to read maybe as a family or pick yes. a chapter and kind yes. of talk so about it. You can like it. take a big idea, yeah. discuss it, talk about it. This would actually be good for classrooms too. Like so if you're a teacher or you have a friend who's a teacher, this might be really, really good to bring into a classroom too. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah, so that's big ideas for curious minds. Um, this one's really cool, staying in the nonfiction vein. This is called Our Planet. This is actually a book adaptation of that Netflix series oh, about our planet. Um, so it's got some really, really incredible um, photography. I'll just kind of open it up wow, here. So it gorgeous. takes um, the different uh, climates of our world and mm -hmm. just talks about them. Some, um, the, there's not a, a too much text. It's not super duper text heavy, really palatable for young people, big images. Um, and that you can't even see how amazing this is in real life. This yeah. is incredible. This would make the most beautiful book yeah. gift to anybody. Absolutely. So definitely come wow. out of the store, take beautiful. a look at this one. Uh, this is Our Planet, the, the Netflix series book adaptation. Nice. Uh, last one in the nonfiction vein. This one is, I say this about all of them, that they're my favorites. <laughs> this one might be my favorite. This is Strange But True by Katherine Hulick. This is essentially scientific. Um, theory for kids. This is um, taking some, so it's the 10 uh, world's greatest mysteries explained. Okay. And she's going over scientific theory. So like, how would you test a hypothesis? Like you have this idea of Bigfoot is real. How would you prove that? How would you disprove that? And so this is really, really good also for curious kids that love things that are um, a little bit otherworldly. So mm -hmm. UFOs. It's extremely popular in every genre every tv yeah. show every it's everywhere yeah Kids are so really it's aliens scary. it's ghosts it's nice. bigfoot it's sea monsters it's all of these things that kids really really love and i loved as a kid too i love the idea of bigfoot i love the idea of the right. Loch Ness monster and so in this book catherine talks about um how how um eyewitnesses have first-hand accounts but then how if you use a scientific method you can disprove these things but you know where where's the the truth it's you know what i mean so it's it's yes. this really interesting concept Great. for kids to learn um, and the way that um, the information is laid out is really nice. It's got illustration to break up the text. So if your kid is really into visual literacy or they're having trouble with like just reading straight prose on a page, this is also very good because nice. it's a high level concept, um, but it makes the reading experience really accessible. So Strange But True by Catherine Hulick. Excellent. Um, this one is also very, very good. Um, moving back down a little bit, I've got a couple of easy readers. This one cracks me up. It's oh, Frank and Bean. Frank and Bean, yes. So, so cute. The idea of a bean with a trumpet just cracks me <laughs> up. So it's this hot dog and this bean, and they kind of have this tumultuous relationship, and it's an easy reader chapter book. They get into some shenanigans and some fun. Um, so it's just a good, silly, easy gift for a young person who's just getting into reading. Right. Yeah, I know when I first started to read, I couldn't get enough books. And the funnier they are, the more you want to read. Yeah, yeah. So this one's the hot dog is kind of curmudgeonly, and then Bean is really silly. And like, <laughs> he just comes in blaring his trumpet and banging his drums, and a uh, hot dog just wants some quiet. And <laughs> yeah, so this nice. is really fun. Yeah, Frank and Bean. It's really cute. Um, uh, same reading level. This is Chicken Brain, Smell My Foot by C.C. Bell. I actually got to hear C.C. speak about this book and she was talking about how when she was a kid, Dick and Jane helped her learn how to read. Mm -hmm. So then she came up with 
Chicken, Chicken Brain, Brain, which is a, <laughs> Great. A, um, a book that teaches kids how to read. Um, it's a really silly book about manners. So Brain right. is a s sort of um, silly, goofy character, and Chick is more rational. And so they kind of have this back and forth banter about language and about manners, and it's just super duper silly. The illustrations in this are great. Um, just really, really fun. So kids won't realize that we're actually, as adults, trying to guide them into yeah, good behavior. Yeah, They'll be, <laughs> we'll, we will dupe them into their good manners and saying nice. please and thank you. So this one's a really Love good it. one too. Great. Chicken Brain, Smell My Foot by CC Bell. Uh, moving back up into middle grade, this is one of my favorite graphic novels for the season. It's called Glitch by Sarah Ooh. Grayley. I also really enjoy video games, and I think the part of video games that I enjoy the most is the storytelling aspect of it, okay. uh, which is also why I love books. So this story, um, the character uh, gets this brand new video game. She and her best friend Eric have been waiting for this game to come out for forever. She finally gets it. She pops it in. She starts playing it. She finds herself sucked into the video game. Oh, that's yeah. exciting. And the the robot here, Ray, tells our main character that um, only she can save Dungeon City and that she has to go through the quests and play the game. And so she gets just sucked into this game and then she kind of realizes, you know, the real life is real world is still happening outside of this video game. And you know, she starts she lost a life in the video game. What happens if she gets a game over? And so her friend Eric has to sort of swoop in and um, it's just a really fun, quick story. Um, middle excellent grade. Middle grade. Okay. Yep, middle grade. Very cartoony. If your kid is into video games, they're going to love this book. Nice. Super duper fun. So that's Glitch by Sarah Grayley. Um, staying in the vein of middle grade, A Drop of Hope by Keith Calabrese. Um, this is a book that's great for both boys and girls, um, eight to, ages 8 to 12. Okay. Um, it's about three friends. Um, you have um, Ernest. Ryan and Lizzie, and they're this sort of unlikely group of friends um, who come together. Uh, it's small town Ohio. Um, there's like one big um, factory where everyone's f parents seem to work, but the factory's not doing so well. Mm, so scary. jobs are tough, times mm -hmm. are tough. These kids come together, um, and miracles start to happen. They find this wishing well, and oh. wishes start to be granted. And only the three main characters know what's going on, and and how to sort of make everything right again. So this is actually realistic fiction. It sounds a little fantastical, but it's not. It does okay. have elements of miracles and hopes and wishes, but it's very much grounded in reality, very much a story of hope for all young people. So this is a really, really great book um, for anybody who loves to read realistic stories um, and loves really, really strong friendships. I love that. That's Those are my favorite themes yeah. to buy. So, yeah. yeah, I really, really enjoyed this book. Like Even as an adult, I sat down and I read this book, and I was like, you know, I might actually hand this to a few adults to read, because nice. it's just about not judging people and not judging a book by its cover and like, you know, realizing that when you look at a person, there's more than meets the eye. So, Perfect. Drop of Hope by Keith Calabrese. Perfect Calibres. life lesson for yeah. today. Um, and then my last three are YA, so okay. we'll go over these. Are we talking, when we say YA, I always get confused. Is that high mm -hmm. school, middle school? Like, what ages do we recommend basically, that for? Basically, um, 12 and up or 14 and up, depending okay. on the, the um, themes. So, yeah, so okay. this one, I would recommend 14 and up. There's some um, dark stuff in here. There's a little, little bit of violence, but nothing that's over the top. Okay. I always recommend it for high schoolers and up. Um, and also for adults, too. A lot right. of adults read YA, mm -hmm. um, so we should also keep that in mind. So Sorcery of Thorns, this book just... It, it was everything I wanted in a good YA fantasy. So it takes place in a world where libraries actually are these sort of cultural centers, which is very much based in reality. Right. And uh, books have magic. And so there are certain books called grimoires that hold magic. And so libraries are keepers of grimoires. And this can be a dangerous job because the grimoires have the ability to turn into monsters if they're not taken care of oh, properly. Okay. So all these grimoires start turning into monsters. And our heroine is the only one that can figure out what's going on. So she teams mm -hmm. up with a local sorcerer, and of course there's some romance, and it's actually, it's really nice romance. It's yeah. not like ooey gooey or anything. <laughs> um, but this is just, it made the way, when I read this book, it made me feel like I felt when I was reading Harry Potter, and those scenes oh. with Hermione and okay. Ron and Harry in the library poring over books and trying to solve these mysteries. This book made me feel that way. Nice. Um, so this is a standalone by Margaret Rogerson. Um, so this isn't part of a series or anything. It's just on its own story. And it is so, so magical and so, so well done. So Excellent. Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. 
um, anyone 14 and up is really going to enjoy this book. Great. I know a lot of times when people are shopping for nieces and nephews or somebody that they're they're not super close with, they always need recommendations yeah. on what to buy. Absolutely. You know? So it's yeah. great that you can do that. For Absolutely. Us. So. Uh, the next one, The Last Two Poets of the Sea by Julia Drake. This is actually a debut, and mm -hmm. it's one of my favorite, again, using the word favorite for all the <laughs> books that I love. It's one of my favorite YAs of the season. This is realistic fiction. Um, it's about a young girl named Violet, and um, she's kind of had a tumultuous few teenage years. And so um, this, the, this one summer, she decides that she's going to go to Maine and live with her uncle. Mm -hmm. Just to sort of get away from it all, to start over, to start fresh. Um, and so she moves to this small coastal town of Maine and just kind of tries to start over. Doesn't really tell anyone much about herself or where she's from. And um, she makes this group of really, really great friends. Um, and she discovers a lot about herself um, over this one summer. And she learns a lot about her family over the course of this one summer. She's got a brother that she cares for dearly, but he's going through some problems. And so Viola's trying to reconcile that, trying to make new friends, also trying to realize things about herself she's never realized before. And it's just, it's a beautiful story. There is some love in here. There are some relationships in here. But ultimately, it's about the bond between brother and sister, the bond nice. between friends. Um, okay. So this is a really beautiful story. And again, anyone 14 and up is going to enjoy this one. Okay. So we probably have time for one more. Perfect, because I have one more. Excellent. So this might be um, the sort of highest age range. I would actually recommend 17 and up in oh, this okay. because it does deal with some very heavy issues. But the reason I like this book so much is because it deals with a heavy issue in a very, very gentle and calming sort of way. Okay. It is a graphic novel with a limited palette, so the artwork in this is beautiful. It's got a little bit of magical realism to it, so it's set in the real world. Um, it's got real world modern issues. Modern day. Modern day, okay. um, but it's got some magic sort of interjected into it. It's a story of um, two young women. One is in her teenage years, and she's running away from home. Oh. We don't know why, okay. uh, but she's, she's in, we don't know where she's going, but she, we know she's running. Uh, the other is a 27-year-old woman who um, is also running away in a sense. You know, as an adult, you don't necessarily run away from home, but you right. can run from problems and you can run from other things. And so these two sort of meet up along the road and establish this really, really great bond um, between strangers who are kind of going through similar things. And there's this magical kitty, which for me, like, just <laughs> sealed the deal. Um, and you realize in this book that the, the villains that are chasing them are um, not quite what they seem. Okay. So this is a really, really beautiful book. When you get to the end of it, you kind of have this revelation and you realize what you just read and you're like, wow. So definitely come talk to me more at the store about this one. Okay. I could talk about this book forever and I know we're limited on time here. Uh, but this is Are You Listening by Tilly Walden, 17 and up. Um, magical realism. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming today. Of so, course. as you know, we just recommended books from ages 0 to 17 here with Kelsey. Um, if you have any questions about these books, you can um, stop by the bookstore and um, ask Kelsey more questions. When we come back from our break, Annie Philbrook's going to join us to tell us what to buy for those adults in your life. So, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Because of you, I feel not alone in this world. And you let me know that it only takes one person to make you feel wanted. Welcome back to At Your Library. This week we're doing the holiday gift buying guide. And Annie Philbrick is now joining us from Bakesware Books to tell us what to buy for those adults in your life. This Welcome. Is, thank you, Kathleen. This is great. This is one of our favorite things to do. Um, so I'm going to start with someone who is perhaps a gardener or an artist. This is called An Island Garden by Celia Thaxter. This was originally published in 1894, just before she died. Huh? It's about a gar her garden while she lived on the island of Appledore off the Isle of Shores off of Massachusetts in New Hampshire. You can actually go there and see her you garden. Still can. They've recreated it. Wonderful. But it has all sorts of illustrations in it that she did in watercolors. And I have a slipcover co case, slip case copy of this book at home that sort of inspired me to grow all sorts of different types of flowers and sort of this wild garden from her one on Appledore Island. And this has been reprinted by David Godine and was recently out. 
So that's great because it's it's very local to us. Yes, it is. So you get nice. and I've always wanted to go there, but I've never made it there. Oh, okay. you're anyway. putting that on your list. I was on my list. <laughs> um, so another one is a memoir that's come out called Wild Game: My Mother, Her Lover, and Me by Adrian Broder. Oh. Um, this is a memoir by the daughter who covered up her mother's affair with her father's best friend. Ooh, the daughter. Um, a lot of the names are changed, not all of them, but it's basically the daughter is now like an adult and writing about how she, her mother, she was her mother's confidant during an affair um, on Cape Cod. And it's, it's very well written, it's very startling, but it's a really good read in terms of a memoir. Another sort of memoir you'll see that part uh, genre that I love um, is called Good Husbandry by Kristen Kimball. Yes, we know her, The Dirty right. Life. So Kristen Kimball's first book, The Dirty Life, mm -hmm. was the one book, one region yes. kick. Um, Kristen is actually coming to Bank Square Books on December 4th to yes. be signing copies. She will. I will be there also. Yeah. Part of our holiday <laughs> gift guide. Um, she left New York City, moved with a, her husband up to a farm in Essex, New York. This is, a, this is more a story about being a mother, having small kids, and running a farm with her husband. Excellent. I can't um, reach you. Really that. good. It's just very honest. It's there. It's about, a lot about hard work in all different aspects mm -hmm. of one's life. I can't even imagine farming in today's world. I'm yeah, really it's, interested it's, in that. it's a lot. Um, another one is uh, Travel, Travel Light, Move Fast by Alexandra Fuller. Okay. She wrote um, Don't Let's Go to the Dogs Tonight oh, okay. and some other books. This is about her father. She grew up in Africa. Her father went to fight in the Rhodesian War and then ended up in Zambia as a banana farmer. He, you know, his, her parents were both sort of crazy, um, lived a full life, drank a lot. It's just the story is a lot about her relationship with her father. Okay. Um, it's a little tragic towards the end, but it's just it's a really interesting story about a man, a father-daughter relationship, and living in Africa. Really good writer, really, really good. Um, this one is How We Fight for Our Lives. It's a memoir by Saeed Jones. Saeed Jones is a black gay poet who has written a memoir about his life growing up black and gay in Texas. Wow, that's so um, cool. And about his mother and his grandmother. His mother was a Buddhist, and his grandmother took him to church every Sunday. Um, I listened to uh, him speak on a podcast about this memoir and picked it up and started reading it, and it's just... It brings you into a life that you just don't know, probably know anything about right. necessarily. And really, he's really honest. He's there. It's, it's, and I love when a poet will write a book because they're just, their writing is just really beautiful and fluid. Right. Um, this is another, The Great Pretender by Susan Kalen. She wrote Brain on Fire about she was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease and that was affecting her brain and oh, all the doctors scary. thought it was mental illness Ooh, until they actually found that there was a scientific reason as to why she was acting the way she does because her brain was basically on fire as she wow. describes it. This take, this delves more into mental illness. Um, there's a, there was a doctor from Stanford who did a study by at putting people who were not mentally ill into asylums across the United States, pretending they were a patient. Oh, okay. And it takes us into the treatment of asylum, how they were, di they all were given diagnosis, mostly of acute paranoid schizophrenia, when they were not mentally ill. So it's a fascinating sort of detective, um, deep look into mental illness that sort of changed the way we now today look at mental illness. Um, She's very bright, it's, it's fast paced, it's, it's an excellent, excellent, interesting look at mental illness. Um, one of my favorite books of the year is Hollow Kingdom by Kara Jane Buxton. Kara, these are signed copies, Kara came to the store. Um, this is narrated by a crow who loves Cheetos. Oh, okay. And he and the dog, they, they are living, they are in Seattle and there is this mysterious illness beginning to kill all the people in Seattle. So the crow, ST, and the dog wander through the streets of Seattle trying to figure out what's going on and trying to sort of save people. It's funny, it's serious, it's, it's so appropriate for Seattle in terms of one of the tech hubs of the world with Amazon. Um, but it's just, it's a really fun, it's a little fantasy, it's a little dystopian, but it's also really based in reality. And the fact that it's narrated by a crow is just hilarious. Um, in terms of historical fiction, this is Giver of the Stars by Jojo Moyes. Jojo Moyes is the British author, author who wrote Me Before You. Yes. 
Um, this is based on a true story of there was an English woman who married an American man and moved to Kentucky to be with him. She didn't have much to do. She was sort of being, feeling very claustrophobic, claustrophobic. And there was a call out to find women who would ride horses around the mountains of Kentucky to deliver library books. And so this British woman jumped on the cause. The men did not know what to do with these women who were out there riding these horses across the mountains of Kentucky, didn't think they could do it. Um, really good historical fiction um, set in Kentucky based on a true story. So The Giver of Stars by Jojo Moore. At least two people on my list will be getting that one. Okay, it's really good. I, I really love that good. book. I've read it. Um, I may have talked about this before when we've been here. This is one of my favorite books. It's a staff pick always at Bank Square Books. It's called Follow Your Heart by Susan Tomorrow. This was written in 1994. It's basically the letter from a grandmother to her estranged granddaughter who has fled Italy to go to the United States. Oh. And she's writing about how to find the courage to follow your heart, which she didn't do when one of her, with her first love, her family convinced her to let him go, and she let him go, and she's now dying and regretting that, and has most of her life, but lived a full life. Okay. But it's just, it's a wonderful gift to give to somebody. It's Follow Your Heart by Susan Tomorrow. Another quick backlist that I love, too, is Find the Good by Heather Lende. I think I've talked about this before. I went to college with Heather Lende. She lives in Haines, Alaska. She uh, wrote obituaries for the Haines newspaper. Okay. And in every one she wrote, she tried to find something good about that person. Wow. Even though he or she might have been a curmudgeon, you know, their reputation might be that they just were eccentric and not a great person, but she always tried to find something good in that person to write about oh, in their obituary. Nice. So there's stories in here, but it's good. It's just another really good gift book. Um, the, another one is Siberian Dilemma by Martin Cruz Smith. He's the author of Gorky Park and, and, and Tatiana and a number of oh, other books. Yes. He brings us back to um, Arkady Renko and takes him to Siberia to solve some murders and political corruption in Siberia. Really good thriller sort of book if you like reading about books in Russia and Siberia. It's great. Um, this Tender Land by William Kent Kruger. He also came to Bank Square Books um, with us. This is a story of a Native American school um, where Native American children were sent to be educated in this school. This, there are two white boys that um, basically get in trouble and end up leaving with a, another um, Native American kid and a, young, and, a t and a little girl and their travel th running away from the Native oh. American school. But it, it's a lovely, lovely heartfelt book mm -hmm. of his. I've read a bunch of his book and this is really um, at the top of his writing. Very good book for that. This would be good also for men and women to right. anything and he's, like that. He's been a best-selling author for, so for a my, while now. So I also have a cookbook. Oh yes, <laughs> yes, absolutely. This is my cookbook Bible these days. I, have okay. made, I use it almost every day. Allison Roman, nothing fancy. Um, she used to work for Bon Appetit. She writes for them. She, this is just delicious, not complicated recipes. Okay, not complicated. They're not complicated. Um, you know, some are chickpeas with feta and oregano and frizzled onions. Okay. There's she loves iceberg lettuce. There's a great really? salad made with iceberg lettuce. I'm gonna have to look at that. And I, olives, I don't know if I believe and, that. And pepper, uh, <laughs> pickled, pickled, um, like jalapeno and um, pecorino cheese. Just really delicious, delicious, great gift for people um, or one. It just sits on my table. I practically read it every day and That's underline really everything. That's really great. So enough great pick for the cook. For the I cook love and that. And your family. But those are my picks. And it's hard because I could have come up with about 10 more to bring. Right. But right. there we are. So Thank you anyway, so we much. love doing this. And, you know, if we can help at all at the bookstores over the, over the holiday season, we're there to Absolutely. help Absolutely. Thank you so much for You're coming. You're welcome. You're welcome. If you have any questions about any of the books we've talked about today, or you're looking for something completely different, I can tell you that the bookstore has it or they can get it for you. So stop in down in Mystic at Bank Square or in Westerly at Savoy. And thank you again for You're coming. Welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. This has been At Your Library. Thanks for checking in. Thank you.